guys. Welcome to this first episode of 2024. Um, we're catching up with all the new things that are happening in our lives right now. Happy New Year also. Ha- Happy New Year. Hope <laughs> you guys had a good holiday with friends, family. If you guys celebrate all the different holidays out there, um, best wishes to you all on that. <laughs> um, but we've got an exciting episode. Um, it's going to be a heavy visual episode for people listening. Um, we're going to explain everything we can. Yeah, we'll do our best to remember to t- table <laughs> talk about what we're and holding. Describe and describe uh, everything that way. But um, what we want to do is kind of catch up. Uh, last year was great. We had a lot of success uh, stories. We had a lot of great uh, experience learning. We're going to be changing some things up uh, for this year with what we learned from last year. We'll be sharing all those changes with you guys as we go forward. Um, so if you guys want to stay with us for the adventure, I'm doing the plug. Uh, make sure to <laughs> like and subscribe to the video if you guys are uh, on uh, audio uh, hit this uh, follow button, hit all the different social media things, all those things. You know what we're talking about, guys. But thanks for joining us. Um, but yeah, we've got 2024. We're in the first week. We're three days into 2024. Yep, yep. When you guys are watching, it'll we be are... the first week in 2024. Yep. Um, we have we... a two-month-old who two. I am wearing again for this episode. Yeah, her second <laughs> podcast episode. Yep. <laughs> What are some of your hopes, dreams, plans? We're not big on resolutions. We're not big on nah. um, any of that stuff there. But like, we do have some things coming for twenty twenty four. What are some of those things that you've got like in this next year planned out for? Who me? Yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do we have planned for twenty twenty four? I definitely plan on um, opening up for more commissions. Um, I know I kind of um, stopped taking commissions at the end of the year because we were getting ready to have. Uh, our little girl here, but um, I definitely plan on opening up for commissions again. I'd love to do more cosplay costume commissions. I think they're so much fun. Um, in fact, I think I have a, a Star Trek one already lined up for January, which will be fun. Um, yeah, I don't. Even, I honestly don't even know what else. More shows, more markets, more fun, more making. More making. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it goes into last year. You, I think, had record year for amount of commissions that you mm-hmm. did and so definitely we have yeah i haven't counted i'm working on putting that post together i'm gonna post that on instagram and, and facebook and everything for sure but i gotta count those up and see how many I ended up doing because it felt like a lot of really good ones yeah and like it felt like almost every month there was like a couple that were overlapping each other every mm-hmm. month it wasn't just like one or two it seemed like there yeah. was like a few that kind of came well, in well what was really exciting was i had a couple of like repeat customers basically I made one thing for them and they're like hey can you make this what about this like is this in your wheelhouse so that was really fun to like see that they liked my work appreciated what I made for them the first time around enough to want to come back for more so it is always exciting always exciting having repeat customers having people return to our booths and Mm -hmm. like oh I bought this from you last year and it's still like on my water bottle or I love that print that's on my wall and so hearing those stories and having people come back means we're doing something right, I'm guessing. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as also one of the other things for the people watching the show, we'll get into it, but there is a lot of crap on this table yes. in front of us. And what we will be diving into is for everybody who kind of meets us and uh, at shows and have conversations, sometimes people are like, I can't afford to get into this. I don't know where to start. I don't know where to get my tools or supplies. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it's that question of how do I get started? We have we have our methods of how mm-hmm. we do it. And everything on the table here has been thrifted. Yep. And so we'll get into a little bit of that a little later in the show as well and talk about like things to look for, things to find, and what you can like utilize at a thrift store as yes. well. Um, as far as 2024 goes, for me, um, definitely trying to get a lot more remote work um for Mm -hmm. supporting the family because of her i mean (laughs) it's been great these past two months really spending time here and making sure she's gotten the support she's needed to kind of have a good start so i it's hard to leave that um and potentially go to a a nine to five uh and kind of be away from it but being the support system there would be great if i can make that work if yeah kind of a similar vein and not just like commissions but yeah you know like stuff in the art world that's remote where i can work from home yeah and continue to support uh her artist journey on the next uh leg of her uh, kind of raising but um 2024 will be an interesting year for that it will be a year of learning how to work around 
Anchor, <laughs> which yeah. we already have been for these past two months. But um, it has been a little bit of a, like, oh, uh, what would you say, uh, a wrench in our uh, <laughs> machine, I guess. Um, but uh, it, it came to very quickly where we put the shop out for two two weeks mm-hmm. um yeah the shop was only shop. closed for two weeks that's the shop was only closed for two weeks and then in that first week opening back up we were already starting to see orders come back in mm-hmm. which again i know a lot of people are nervous about shutting down especially like we shut down right before holiday yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> hey i mean family we, could, comes we couldn't control sense, the but, yeah we couldn't yeah. really control the timing there but <laughs> but that was that, that worked out fine we're able to kind of uh tag team the situation and christy was just down earlier today before we were recording and uh we're getting some orders out i've been getting uh i've been making more post post office trips i think for you than yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> than you usually do um, and then within that first month of uh, being, I know we talked about it on the last episode. We had a show coming up, and um, mm-hmm. I did my first solo show. Yep. Without I stayed you. home with Junie. Yeah, you stayed home, and that worked out just fine. We were able to, again, see a lot of our friends. I know that some of them were hoping we'd uh, be bringing Juniper with us on that first show, but we Not wanted to. Quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> we were still only four weeks over. I know, I think recommendations from doctors are about six to eight weeks before she goes out into public uh, in that sense. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> it was still a good time. She, We learned a lot. We downsized some of our show um, uh things that we brought out uh, to yeah, the I show. Yeah, I think you would try to simplify it since you were flying solo. Yeah, and um, made it work. It was a successful show for us. Again, like I said, we met, uh, got to hang out with some of our friends uh, that we missed for at least a month since we saw them prior. And so mm-hmm. it was really weird because it was like we've been in the house like kind of solo and yeah. then just to go out. I was like, oh, hi, think, everybody. There's a world outside of here. Yeah, I think they call it cocooning, right? Where you're just kind of staying with the baby at first because her immune system's not built up and you're getting used to having a baby, and you know, a baby and infant in the house. So, yeah, yeah, we kind of had our, our cocoon. It was the first time venturing out, really. Yeah, one of the things I've been able to, because uh, we're adapting and figuring this out, I've been spending a lot more time on my iPad drawing because it's uh, my... My office space is downstairs, so to come from upstairs to downstairs and work uh, has been a little harder than usual. So uh, the iPad has been very convenient to while she's sleeping, just kind of sitting right there and drawing and messing around with uh, a couple ideas and working forward on some stuff. We've gotten... Um, I dabbled in a lot of print-on-demand stuff um, mm-hmm. that kind of gave us a little bit of like open possibilities, but also gave some of our artwork uh, more... Um, I don't want to say breathing room, but more potential. Like opportunities, Yeah, maybe. opportunities, that's a good way to put it. Because um, you can go into the shop and pick up some of uh, my original art that's on T-shirts that mm-hmm. I'm uh, multicolor, sc- not, I'm not multicolor screen printing down here. We haven't gotten that <laughs> system completely dialed in down here. But um, some of the full color work that I've been doing can be put on T-shirts. And um, we also have a couple of mugs up in the shop yeah. now and a couple of wall prints. It um, gives us some flexibility to... Uh, create and put mo- new products out without having to be down here 100% of the yeah. way. Yeah, as well, we um, absolutely, I mean, handmade is first and foremost what we love doing, making everything ourselves, but now that we have a baby and that takes up a lot of our time, it's a little having the print shift. on demand has been really helpful to get products in the shop without having to be down here physically making things. Yeah, and so we're still, um, we've got a few things lined up for some of my original print work because we have the printer capability mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the printer stuff will still come from us directly um, because we have that. But um, as far as like bigger projects, I know we've got some plans for the backyard um, for <laughs> once the uh, winter kind of dies down. That's uh, some things we've got planned for 2024. Which potentially, I like, there's a part of me that wants to do um, a show out around the fire pit and uh, have some people over. And I don't know what the topics would change about, but <laughs> I mean, there's always a possibility for something that way. Um, but also, uh, we plan on doing a lot more tutorials for you guys as well. Yes. And some of the, like, inkling into that is what we have here in front of us um, with some of the materials and different tools and things. Um, mm-hmm. But we have been talking about it we've been trying to figure out the next couple things to do for you guys and we have some ideas of what we do and how we do things and again Mm -hmm. there's multiple ways to skin a cat as the saying goes um 
and our way is not 100 percent the right way it's just another opportunity to, to or another option to look at when you guys are in your creative journeys but um i think 2024 what else do we got planned for this year as we get started kicking this year off with everything um guess we got some guests lined up we'll be getting some uh new people on the show we're again we're trying to get back onto a regular every two week schedule so um again Hit that subscribe button to see when the new episodes are coming out. <laughs> and uh, you guys get all the fresh new tutorials, podcasts, and anything else we are going to be throwing up on the channel as well. Um, guests coming. I'm trying to think mm -hmm. of the list I had written down. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Else? You didn't share the list with me, I know, so I, I don't know. know what you have planned. <laughs> the list is honestly written down in my head, so that's why I didn't share uh -huh. with you. Okay. Um, <laughs> what else you got going? Um I mean, we'll definitely be making, you know, a trip out to California, hopefully hitting up some uh, different thrift stores on the way. Correct. Uh, that'll be in the spring. And we uh, are going to apply for Craft Lake City again for oh, yeah. sure. Craft Lake City is definitely on our top list. Um, we are definitely planning to be at Brighton this year. We definitely mm -hmm. um, we're on the fence right now about the Ogden show. We still we might hit up uh, a few times up there just to get up there. But uh we we're trying to stay local travel uh, yeah. with the newborn um, to make it a little easier on us. Um, but also looking at some other smaller shows. And um, we've been packaging stuff up in ways that can also get put into shops mm -hmm. and stores. So it kind of alleviates some of our stuff. So some of the original postcard designs, original sticker designs, um, our extra large stickers, um, some of our prints. Um, what else have I been packing up? Oh, uh, we did buttons. I did uh, custom packaging for buttons. Mm -hmm. um, a few other things we've got lined up, but those will have uh, like hang tag and like priced and like uh, branding and all that other stuff. I've been designing that stuff so that um, we potentially can get those into shops and alleviate some of the like having to um, pack it all up for shows and put it out in that sense. So those are some of the things we've got planned coming up for 2024 and as we move forward with this adventure that we call Maker. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's get into what the real topic of this whole episode is, is finding materials and tools and like starting your creative journey at the thrift store. Yep. And yep. like the possibilities are endless. And it doesn't have to be limited to the thrift store, obviously, but it's just mostly about being resourceful and thrift stores are a great resource to find inexpensive materials and tools for sure. Yeah, and also like thinking outside of the box with those tools mm -hmm. and materials as well cuz it is so easy to go to a big box store and pick up the sh off the shelf the exact thing you're looking for with it, but it also is going to cost you high and it's also that like barrier to entry that kind of puts people off sometimes and sometimes these specialty tools can be very costly and mm -hmm. can be oh, and you man. might not need that specialty tool yeah and and honestly some of the tools we use every day is not a specialty tool it's more of that uh generic tool or general mm -hmm. tool that helps us in a lot of different uh places now we do have our presses or prints or our, our printers mm -hmm. and our sewing machines mm -hmm. and things like that but honestly that's a great place to start. Is the sewing machine yep. at thrift stores? Oh, yeah. They're abundant. And yes. And just because it's at the thr thrift store doesn't mean it's not working. We have, I've thrifted sewing machines before, brought it home, we've had started a it right up, worked great. We've had a couple. And then the other thing that, too, to think about is you can pick up sometimes at thrift stores uh, sewing machines for five, ten dollars in a lot of cases. And with that, you can also go spend fifty, sixty dollars at, um, a service center and just have it looked over and serviced and a lot of local big cities have people who service uh sewing machines um it is still a very popular uh uh thing out there you just have to look them up in the yellow pages yeah yeah that's right i said the yellow pages guys. <laughs> I was gonna say, um or <laughs> you know kidding. this thing called google, google. yeah exactly <laughs> um showing my age there okay boomer. Uh, yeah seriously <laughs> but um Getting some of these older machines sometimes <laughs> uh, serviced is honestly even better than some of these newer, cheaper machines. Like, you can sometimes find a brand new machine at a big box store for under $100, but they're just not as heavy duty. They, they might not have as many functions, functions or stitch options. Um, and some of the older things, honestly, they work better than the new stuff. And it's, again... It, well, this and is... especially, like, older sewing machines tend to be made out of, like, solid metal construction. So they're 
actually much sturdier and will hold when taken care of projects, yes, yeah. last much longer. Yeah, because I mean, sure. you have a sewing machine, an older sewing machine, and it's, mm-hmm. we're talking what almost twenty years old now, right? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> uh, I mean, we're talking like the brand, the, your brand new singer when you got it brand new. That's almost oh. twenty years that you've been using it. Mm, it's like 15 years 15 years i think 2009 okay and yeah so, my my original like new to me sewing machine so, and then before well, that brand new but yeah. i mean my mom's sewing machine that i was using mm-hmm. i'd probably say it's from the 70s 80s yeah i was using my mom's yeah. machine before too from the 70s yeah and mm-hmm. so and they're still kicking that's the thing like you we could go pull it out of their closet turn it on and still be able to sew mm-hmm. something up. Yep. Um, so if it's something in the sewing I mean, sewing I have my world, grandma's sewing machine from like the 50s, I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if the one behind mm, us is no. actually functioning, but... <laughs> yeah. But um, I have one that is actually functioning. Yeah. It works that, beautifully. It is true. Your your grandmother's yeah. from the 50s is... so, And it's so heavy. Like, so heavy. And it's so beautiful. It I is. It so much. But um, <laughs> if you are looking at getting into sewing and down that rabbit hole, like, start off with the machine and... It can be daunting. There's sometimes you have to look up models, look look if they're valued in a way that's going to benefit you. But honestly, a quick Google search and um, some time before you buy. And what's five ten dollars in some cases? Like for some of these sewing machines, you might just like find a new hobby that you really enjoy by spending mm-hmm. that little bit. And then we get into fabric because oh my gosh, that's a thing. that's the obvious find for me at thrift stores is old bed sheets blankets i mean a lot of thrift stores now have actual fabric sections where people donate fabric that they didn't end up using um so you can find actually like whole pieces of uncut fabric um yeah we found whole bolts in mm-hmm. some cases oh, yeah. where it's just like oh hey look at this like bolt of material that you use not necessarily for uh, a project that you're selling mm-hmm. but yeah, it's so more for like say, test can, patterns yep. and um like trying new things out and sometimes it's just for things around the house like hey we need a quick curtain and you're just like oh i had that thrifted (laughs) material and yeah but yeah definitely for testing out new patterns when i'm working on um those custom commission designs and i need to test out like okay is this the shape i need is this the you know how i want it to look i can test it out on fabric that i thrifted for a couple bucks and not because worry about using the expensive fabric or material some of that expensive fabric when you do get into the finished piece you're talking forty dollars a yard in some cases for Sometimes, some of yeah. the materials, and so it would really suck yeah. <laughs> to like sew something up and then it get burnt by it being oh it's slightly off here or it's slightly off there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what's great is that that first initial one you have is now you have a pattern that you keep and you can yep. replicate and make over and over, which you see it happen with all our stuff on Etsy. That's how it started. We started with somebody asking for something, and we gone. We don't know exactly how to do it, but we can figure it out. Christy figured it out. Yep. Has that pattern. I think what there's a booklet of multiple different hood shapes you have. I don't now even know how many hood shapes I have. The different iterations of the, the hood that versions. I've made. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so like, hey, someone's like, hey, can you do this one in this color with this like drape? And no like, problem. <laughs> I think I can. And, and so um, scrap fabrics are huge. Yeah. But also, like you said, bed sheets and um, like pillowcases and vintage fabric mm-hmm. it's been very popular you've probably seen a lot of short uh, shorts and reels and things like that on uh, social media but like we Table found cloths, quilts some cool pieces yeah. um if you go into our social media you can see some of our care bear pieces that we did mm-hmm. we found some care bear pillow uh patterns from i think the 70s 80s i don't I, 80s i, I want to say i don't remember exactly i don't um, either <laughs> Uh, but it has a little trademark uh, with the date on him, which is great. But they make for really cool big back pieces on flannels, on jackets, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So um, they've been very popular with us at shows. Um, I found some Peter Pan ones, some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ones, which we have some project ideas um, we'll be working on. We're just trying to find the right pieces to match up with stuff. But people throw these things away or donate them and... A lot of times people don't look at it the same way. And I know there's a lot of new makers out there and a lot of new uh, thrifters and um, uh, repurposers that are looking at it differently now. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really great. But there's still huge opportunities yeah. of stuff sitting there. And what's sad is a lot of times it'll sit there in the thrift stores for the week, two weeks, not sell because someone didn't see it. And then it goes to a dump. 
And then we're like, those pieces are gold and they're just lost forever because they'll be sitting in a dump somewhere or sent to a, another country or whatever. Yeah. However, they dispose of those things. But um, fabric, materials, um, some of the things we have here on the table is um, some scrap fabric we found, some uh, Care Bear pieces and mm-hmm. some uh, Disney. But there's also this bag of leather scraps. Um, and I don't even know... Like, it's got multiple projects in it, but... Um, yeah, these are clearly pieces of, like, project leather. If you're looking visually... Possibly even uh, came from a store like Tandy Leather or something like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, the, we're, we're not looking at making this exact project with these, but that bag, it's a... Uh, I still have the price tag on a lot of these things. It says $2 on oh, that yep, bag. Yep. Um, and what's great is all of this, like, material that's in here, and I'm holding about... Uh, what do you say maybe about like a eight inch by mm-hmm. like six inch piece of leather it's got some holes in it but like we can make about maybe four or five earrings out of this material Easily. oh yeah um and then we're upcycling this stuff before it goes out to scrap um and finding a new use for it but that's again that two dollars of material is going to make us quite a bit of product that people ask for when they go to shows and like christy's got we've gotten a lot of great deals from um purse makers and furniture makers on mm-hmm. scrap leather that they cut the pieces down and they have the little small pieces and we're not looking to build these giant pieces with the leather we're yeah. looking for things that are hanging off ears little buttons yep. bur- barrettes you have some uh, barrettes on the table right now mm-hmm. that all uses scrap leather and we're again trying to keep stuff out of the landfill as much as yep. we can but also making products that people are asking for yeah and And i think it's a great selling point it's eco-conscious it's using up it's called second use leather right it's using up mm -hmm. giving it more life uh, more use and you still end up with a really beautiful product that is it no one would guess that it's like quote unquote thrifted or trash right it's yeah and it's like, still perfectly good material. It's one of those. It's also one of those things where you're like, oh yeah, it's, we're upcycling leather, and people are like, oh, that's even cooler kind mm-hmm. of thing, because a scrap like that from a hobby shop that sell or a leather store or something, mm-hmm. you're gonna spend a few bucks, and you're gonna hope that the material works the way you need it to, and go. This allows us to test some stuff. We can throw some dyes on there. We can Mm -hmm. uh, try different like techniques. We can experiment. And we know, hey, this is going to work for us. And we get some cool products out of it. And it allows us, again, to experiment and see what happens. But um, what else do we have on the table here uh, as far as materials? Oh, I... This bag of money. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) So... um, I don't know. I just saw it and it was a dollar. It's shredded up money. I haven't Mm -hmm. figured out a use for it. But again... Thinking of materials, thinking of things like that. We're thinking of like putting it in resin maybe for something. But it's cool shredded up money. Usually, I think when I looked it up on Amazon, it's like anywhere from like $15 to $20 um, for that same bag of shredded money from the U.S. Treasury. Um, And I was like, oh, it's a dollar. Like, again, I haven't used it yet. It's been sitting on our shelves of materials. But it gives us, like, again, for the artists who are thinking outside of the box, looking at materials, trying to figure out ways to create stuff, that's a medium that you can play with that's going to give you a lot of options. And it's a spending a dollar at the thrift store. Yeah, for, I mean, that could easily be used in any kind of mixed media piece, collage. We could throw it into our paper mix and make true. paper with it, like throw I, it in resin. I mean, there's all kinds of that. things. Um, But that's, a again, it's a unique piece. It's not something you're going to find at every thrift store. It's not a, you're going to see every week. <laughs> But um, when you see those cool, unique materials, uh, try it. See what happens. You never know what's going to go. Chris, you've got uh, on the here, this is a yeah, jar Yeah, this buttons. really pretty vintage tin um, that, again, was at the thrift store. And I really just liked the tin and was looking at it. And, of course, when I opened it up, it was full of buttons. This must have been some, you know cute Grandma. grandma's like <laughs> tin of buttons. Um, but there's some really cool, unique buttons in there that are definitely vintage. Um, and I think that I think it was like five bucks for the tin full of buttons. And now I've got buttons that I can use that are unique, um, you know, for different pieces. I can do all kinds of things with those. And, and it's in a beautiful tin. I just love it. And <laughs> again, it goes into the thought process of when you're making your pieces and you're making your unique stuff, like you might only need two or three buttons and mm-hmm. you go to a big box store and they sell a, a, a box of buttons of 20 buttons. You don't need that much and everyone's yeah. going to have that button. It's mm-hmm. one of those things that were like, hey, I found three buttons in this jar of hundreds of buttons. Yep. 
that are going to work. Some Sometimes I've seen you do it where you've done different style of buttons. Down yeah, I was going to say, I was doing a dress earlier this summer where I needed like, I think five buttons or six buttons. And I just chose five or six different ones that were similar colorway, similar size, but each unique button. Um, and they were all vintage and just very unique and cool. And it makes something that I made that much more unique and special, I think. Yeah. And I think that's, again, um, costume jewelry. You can find big bags mm-hmm. of costume jewelry mm-hmm. that you can either utilize the way they are or tear them apart and build something different, yep. make something unique to you. But that material, the beads that are there, the stones, yeah. the different things, that is the exact same stuff you're going to go to a big box store purchase an individual item for five ten dollars potentially mm-hmm. and you still need all the other pieces if you're looking at these big jars sometimes at thrift stores of costume jewelry for ten twenty dollars that's a crap ton of material mm-hmm. and yeah yes sometimes you're going to sit there and have to sort through and figure it out but what it does is it unlocks a creative outlet by looking at things differently yeah like tear things Absolutely. apart to rebuild in your your techniques your fashion your stuff but um we get past those things and there's actual maker tools Mm -hmm. at thrift stores yes that right there if uh that is a speedball um lino cut mat perfectly wrapped people get into the hobby brand new and i mean it's not the price tag it's 199 um Mm -hmm. i don't remember i i think the price on something like this size is anywhere from like 10 to 20 dollars um it's unused though, and like there's people who jump into the. Uh, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry guys, uh, ear, uh, headphone users, <laughs> but um, that try something out or didn't like it or never got to it and it just sat on their shelf, and they just take it to the thrift store. And if you know what you're looking for with these materials, you can find those pieces. Embroidery hoops. That's another yep. piece of material or uh, tool that like if you're getting into embroidery. It's not super costly at the big box stores, but like sometimes you can find uh, where they wrap up five or six of these for a dollar. Absolutely. And then some of these big ones can get costly. But one of the cool things, which we're going to get into a tutorial on another video, guys, um, but this is screen printing screen here and utilizing big pieces like this to do screen printing Mm -hmm. or custom uh, pieces um, for your screen printing. We've done it here. I have a picture frame. Uh, technique as well and then traditional screens we'll get into another video on screen printing and some ways you guys can get into it on a very cheap note like something like this right here will cost you less than like two three Mm dollars and then screen printing and ink and stuff like that can cost you and again there's different techniques there's different materials there's different um inks and stuff out there that you could really start screen printing on stuff for about I would say under $20 mm-hmm. if, if you know the right way to look uh, for stuff and figure out the right different materials. Yeah. And it's another way to use something other than its intended purpose um, to just be creative, right? A screen printing or no screen printing, an embroidery hoop used for screen printing, right? Yeah. It's just another tool. Yeah. And like for some of these smaller ones that we do, honestly, an old gift card um, and talk about over the holidays, save your gift cards Mm -hmm. um, before throwing them away, because those gift cards work as little tiny screen printing uh, squeegees because you're just doing a little tiny piece this big. You don't need a professional squeegee. They work perfectly. Uh, A lot of our shopping bags that we have at uh, uh, um, shows we screen print them all ourselves. Yep, we We're put our logo right on it. A uh, picture frame, uh, custom made with screen and a uh, credit, old credit card or an old uh, gift card, and we're squeegeeing all these things. If you go again onto our social media, you probably see some of the videos we've posted of us doing that to some of our bags and packaging. Um, I know some of the boxes we send out with uh, products from Etsy are screen printed as well. I haven't done a new batch of our screen yeah. printed ones, but. Um, <laughs> That's another thing we do. Yep. Um, but then you find like tools like finding metal rulers. Like these things are great and they hold up against razors really well. And they're really nice to hold. And yep, or like, rotary cutters. Rotary cutters and stuff. But like I think this was 50 cents at the thrift store. Probably. And like when I see metal ones, I usually grab it. Or the nice long wood ones with a metal band that's not like pulled out or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Keep an eye out for those. They're very, very handy. We have... Yeah. I don't know how many rulers we have. We have tons of rulers. Right, they're in every room. Every room, <laughs> like multiple drawers, different styles, different versions. And like, I want to say I have a favorite, but I, I don't think I do because I go for all the different ones. I think my my 
one I utilize the most is our 90 degree mm-hmm. flat ruler um, that we got from the Dollar Tree. Yeah, and, um, we have a few of those. Yeah, we have a few of them all over Very the place. Very handy. They help for like lining up a lot of like screen stuff. They mm-hmm. help for lining up multiple pieces. and then Squaring you, up fabric, yeah. Your uh, plastic... Um, Quilting uh, roller. Quilting roller mm-hmm. is also, that's another one. I found one of the big, large ones there. Yeah. You have yours you've gotten from uh, the big box stores. And sometimes you just need that specialty one. You don't have the time to like thrift all over the place. You right. find it, it's easier. But I found one of these big ones. I think they're usually like $20, $25 in they some They can cases. get expensive, yeah. It was a dollar. And I yeah. saw, I was one of the times I was solo and I grabbed it. I'm like, oh, Christy, this one's going to be mine. I have not used it. It's, it's been in Christie's possession <laughs> since I brought it home. And so I'm like, well. I thought you got uh, it for me. Yeah. I, that one's lost. So I was like, okay. Um, but that's another fine there. Um, we do a lot. Even basic tools. Like we have a hole punch here. Um, we have just. Well, rolling pin wise. Like yeah. I see these all the time. This is a really nice. I don't remember now if there's name brand or what. But it's a uh, metal rolling pan. Got good handles. But this comes in handy mm-hmm. so much. Uh, when we're using our silhouette cutter, this thing allows us to either apply the vinyl to the um, mat. mat. Mm-hmm. Um, when I'm doing prints, there's times where I will put the ink block or something and I will roll this over the top of it. Um, I do have an actual like um, uh, professional uh, cold press roller. Um, and I do have cold presses as well. <laughs> um, but sometimes this is the thing that I grab very quickly and easily. Um, you need to uh, flatten something out. Having this that you don't care, you're not going up to the kitchen and grabbing the one you're cooking with. This is like yeah. something down here you can get chemicals on and stuff. But again, I think this was a dollar. This one I know is Pampered Chef, and I've used this for vinyl rolling on so many yeah, things. Yeah, I don't know what this is intended for originally. I think it's a cookie roller. I, th- I think that's what I looked it up as. Cookie roller, um, possibly. But it's basically like two-sided. It's got a what do you say like a five inch roller on one side and a little, like two inch kind of beveled roller on the other yeah. side and uh yeah we use i use this all the time when we're doing stuff on the with the cricket the silhouette um on those cutting mats just to roll things roll out the vinyl make sure it's flat smooth whatever I, yeah we grab this thing all the time that yeah there's uh sometimes you just like need something to like Put, apply pressure mm-hmm. this is great again save your hands with uh ink uh again pushing on uh the different uh, uh ink pads and mm-hmm. stuff like that that or not pads the uh rubber stamps and things like that it's another thing i found a bunch of vintage rubber stamps uh people get rid of their collection yep. i yep. bought binders another thing binders uh yes. if you're looking to organize and storage so we haven't started um, talking about organization yet <laughs> which again this is a uh, uh, spice rack that it's meant for your kitchen. It slides out and rotates. Yeah, it's meant to go in your like kitchen cabinet and the little like, s- I don't know, it's kind of almost like a little caddy, right? And it slides out, but we put all our paints in it. Yeah, and so we put it on our I think on pr- our shelves. Price on top of it, still sitting there's two dollars. Yep. Um, there's five of them, uh, and then we also have two that actually pull down as well. Like instead of going out sideways, they pull down and kind of flop down which are great as well for some of our bigger jars uh of different glitters and st- and um powders and dyes and yeah, stuff like that yeah. so it uh, gives us a space on our shelves for all of our different paints and stuff but makes it really easy to access all yeah. the different colors and organize them so easily <laughs> you you can find paints and materials like that at the thrift store i would just be cautious in some of those cases again each user will be different but sometimes they're dried up sometimes they're old um if you know what you're getting yourselves into spending a couple dollars on something it might be just fine for you but uh sometimes it is cheaper to go to the big box stores and wait for a sale wait for a coupon wait for something to get the exact color you want the exact type of paint because paints have different like like flow and so sometimes that's a little harder to come across and find yeah but um, storage for them, though, like there's options. I'm, I'm looking behind the camera and looking at the <laughs> baskets, the totes, the different things. Yes, I would say there are endless store. options for organization and storage and at thrift stores. Think outside the box. That's yes. a spice rack holder. And we paid $2 for that one. I think some of them we got for a dollar mm-hmm. in that case. Um, but that's another thing. Um, kitchen appliances, like we'll go to the other side of the table here. I have a blender in front of me. The kitchen, like, 
I I waited on this one. I paid five dollars for this blender. This is the blender I use to uh, cut up and uh, or to mulch our paper or pulp. Pulp yes. our paper. Use the technical yes. term, Derek. Um, <laughs> pulp our paper. Uh, Take when shredded paper, paper with water, blend it up. You make uh, paper pulp. <laughs> and but the best part. So this is five dollars. Our, I don't think it's on camera. Uh, I think you can't see it over in the corner. Yeah, probably um, not. We have a paper shredder. Again, bought for five bucks at the thrift store. Yep. It's uh, shredding up paper. I throw everything at it to see what it will cut up and go from there. Um, and that paper with this and this. And then we bought the screens online to do the paper. We're making recycled paper for our art, which is really cool mm -hmm. uh, in the grand scheme. But it doesn't take a lot. I've seen people do it by hand, mulch up, rip up, and mm -hmm. tear, and let soak and everything. But efficiency and how much I can get done with having machines that, like, aren't meant to do what I'm doing. I mean, besides paper shredder, meant to shred paper. <laughs> yes. But using a blender that cost me $5 to pulp up paper has been great. And well, and all it, it takes easy. is a little patience and perseverance. I mean, we are regular thrift shoppers, so we know when we're going that we're going to keep our eye out for tools like this that we can use and when we come across one it's like okay great snatch yeah. it up five bucks for paper shredder you can't beat it um one of the other things i didn't even think about grabbing um i have a coffee bean grinder um mm. that i use uh for D, &D uh uh material so what i do is I, i'll actually make you like turf and yeah things. i take turf i'll take um some uh, peat moss i think it is uh-huh um, or like or cork cork or and, um i'll throw it in the little uh uh uh, grinder. It's, uh, grinder. I want, it's not. It's like a spice grinder, mm -hmm. bean, coffee bean grinder. There's a type. It's a blade grinder. It's not burr your, grinder. No, no, no. Burr no? grinder is the fancy one we have upstairs for oh. the coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is not the, a coffee drinker. No, I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's just a regular standard blade grinder. It's not as consistent, but that works perfect for D and D terrain. Because you don't want it to be even. You want it to be uneven, so it looks more natural and organic. Exactly. And so uh, <laughs> the foliage comes out great um, when I grind it down throw some Mod Podge or some uh, Elmer's uh, white uh, PVC. PVA. PVA glue. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, that's not right when I said it. Um, but PVA glue and then throw it right, Oops. sprinkle it on. It sticks great. And you have some cool terrain. Um, I even went as far at one point where I was taking wood bark um, mm -hmm. that we had from uh, some of the firewood. And I was using that to create rock texture. Um, and I, I was... I was trying to find a wood chipper. I could not find a wood chipper for <laughs> yeah. the life of me. Because uh, the, the, I, I was using, when I first started, I was using a uh, meat cleaver that I found at the thrift store. Yep. Chopping up uh, the wood by hand, getting a couple blisters and realizing there's got to be a better way to yeah. do this. But it made for really cool terrain. So I was like, oh, okay, kind of worth the, uh, the effort into it. But um, then got the grinder, really helped break that stuff down. And it's all material. We've gotten the cork from mm -hmm. the thrift yep. store. We got a big old got, roll of cork. I was just to say we got a huge um, roll of cork. <laughs> and so we have a lot of cork stored in our uh, storage of our different materials. Um, and we've used it. And it's great because I'll just go down there and grab that material and go, okay, oh, I've got this idea. Go and grab it and the rest is history. Um, but those are things. And then... Oh, <laughs> We might have to take a small break, or well, maybe not. <laughs> um, she's used to me talking a lot, so I, mean, I don't know why. <laughs> and pacify for the win. Um, as we keep going here, the other things that like I got into. These are um, as he says as he wields knife. Wields knives here. Um, these are great for cutting foam and i discovered these again when making yeah, D &D cheap resin. serrated knives from the thrift store yeah they're they're these are in abundance like there's tons yeah. of these and bread knives meat knives different stuff yeah. like that and it's probably too dull to t cut your tomatoes in the kitchen right but down here in the well, workshop cutting perfect foam, for foam. cutting <laughs> uh cork cutting different materials and i get them in different styles because of the they'll, they'll leave different like uh, like cuts patterns to the material mm -hmm. and um, when you're not looking for perfect, these are great. Um, for If you're looking for clean cuts, always go with your razor blades, um, especially the ex ex uh, expanding ones. Oh, is that the right? I don't know. Um, the snap 
razor blades. Uh, oh. I guess it's expand, but I, um, I forget the name brand of the ones I, I love using. Um, but we have a bunch of those lying all over the place as well. But that's if you want to clean Not cut. Not literally lying oh. around. No. I mean, <laughs> we don't yeah. have razor blades lying around our house. I mean, in the <laughs> workshop, yeah. <laughs> but um, having these ones with the serrations on them for cutting foam, for texture, and different type of uh, things like that have come in handy so much. And then this was a, a fun find. Um, do you know what these yeah, are? I think that's – isn't that for um, – uh, avocados. Um, it, it, it is a fruit scooper. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. They, or they, yeah, I guess it doesn't have to be avocado <laughs> specifically, but that's what comes to mind first. Yeah. So it's again, got that sort of oval shaped blade for scooping out avocado and other. Go into fruit. your kitchen uh, department of your thrift store and look at the different tools and look at how you potentially use. These are great because they squeeze to different shapes. And they have an edge to them. They're not a super sharp edge. I sharpened them a little bit with my knife sharpener. Um, but these cut through foam and get really good gouges and really unique shapes. And um, again, I think I, I mean you could use that for clay too. Like you could use clay, it for lots of materials. Um, that was I was gonna get into it. Like clay, polymer, mm -hmm. um, uh, silicones, different things like that. Um, speaking of silicones, these are egg holders, which I think I got a pack of like. 10 of these i don't know for a buck or two yeah, i don't know um but these are great for mixing resin yeah uh, anything small silicone, batches yeah um mixing inks mink, uh, paints and stuff like that yeah. and i just need to hold them or carry them i around. use it as a little water cup when i'm doing watercolor these are great and again they're reusable so we're not like i for the longest time i was using like dixie cups mm -hmm. and different things that would eventually crumble up throw in the trash kind of thing i just that's <laughs> Dramatic reenactment there in the video. Just threw it on the ground. <laughs> so dramatic. It's so dramatic. Um, but, but with these, I rinse them out. We're not waste. We're not being as wasteful. No, wasteful it's as a were. reusable item for and, sure. Um, Another great tip. I mean, any kind of small cup, um, applesauce containers, yogurt containers, any of those kind of plastic containers. Rinse them out and reuse them. Yeah. Bring them down into your workshop or bring them to your your art or create or maker space and what? use them for anything and everything i use them to sort beads we use them again to, for water when we're painting we use them for it goes mixing. back to i mean our grandparents when we'd stay at their place and we'd be in their workshop and there'd be glass jars or coffee cans of mm -hmm. nails yep. and screws and bits and bops and all the different <laughs> yeah. ends and everything and all it was was just taking that like container for one thing, and using utilizing again, yeah, your pasta we're doing sauce the jar, thing, your mayonnaise yeah. jar, your peanut butter jar. I mean, any of those containers. It's it's keeping it from the landfill a little bit longer, um, and it's honestly, if you get enough of them, like you can actually have a uniform storage mm -hmm. system. Um, we have a bunch of uh, pasta jars from all of our sauce. We like our pasta sauce. And, uh, <laughs> we haven't figured out the exact solution of what, but there are jars filled with. Cork bits, uh, foliage bits, um, uh, glass wood beads, sticks. wood stir sticks. And so they have come in handy and they're all uniform. <laughs> they fit on a shelf. Yeah, cotton balls, different stuff like that. Yep. So that's been a very nice re resource that we're already paying for it from the grocery store when we get the pasta sauce. We're not quite throwing it away right off the bat. And it's been a very nice uh, storage solution. And if you need it with a cap, it has a cap yep. and everything. Yep. And in some cases, they're stackable. What fits your your workspace makes the most sense, but that is one of the things to kind of keep at, an eye out for is, again, I, I, I think I've already said it multiple times, think outside of the box of how you are setting up and what type of restraints you feel are there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like, oh, hey, wait, maybe if I looked at it this way, it's, it's not a restraint. It's a... It's a um, Opportunity. There you go. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> I was say, think outside the big box store. Oh, oh yeah. snap. <laughs> um, and then uh, what else do we have? We have... I say we skipped when we were talking about materials. Paper is yes. a huge thing that we find at thrift Oops. stores. Sorry, guys. This happens to be photo paper that we have on the table with us. So obviously for printing photos or art prints, whatever, but... Any and all kinds of papers. And again, if you guys have a printer and you're doing your own prints and mm -hmm. stuff like that, this stuff is great because especially, whoops, um, what's been nice is uh, with Juniper, we've had a lot of new photos and yep. uh, it's been very easy and cheap to make a lot of photos to send back home to family. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that everybody either has one themselves or knows a relative who has some photo printer and they got their like pack of Canon or HP photo paper and they printed off like five photos and then I never used it again. So all of those papers 
end up at the thrift store and we get them for a dollar and it might not be a full pack but this is a big pack of paper probably nearly full at least 50 sheets 75 cents for four by sixes yeah a dollar for five by sevens i mean right beneath you can't beat it uh, under the table i have a whole shelf here loaded with different Mm -hmm. size of paper different things um there's and not just photo uh, paper we found all kinds of unique and interesting papers this is actually canvas that printed through um and again, I'm holding up for you, audio listeners. Sorry. Um, uh, <laughs> holding up is, one of our canvas prints that we can is, offer because we found canvas material. Yeah, we have canvas material. Prints through our inkjet. It looks great. Um, high quality. Um, but it really, like, when I go online to look at a piece of or a pack of canvas stuff that prints through my printer, I'm looking $30, $40 uh, for a mm-hmm. pack. I mean, uh, it's a, expensive. A reasonable, like, size pack. Um Sample packs, I think, are still like over fifteen, twenty dollars. Um, but the thing is, is I take that risk, fifteen, twenty dollars. I mess up one or two pieces. Mm-hmm. I really only get one or two pieces, maybe out of it. That is something I can sell or hang up or use, in a in a sense. And your cost goes way up. That mat- pack, someone used one piece out of it. I think it was a ten piece pack that I found. I paid two dollars for, um, and. I was able to test one, screwed up the first one because I was testing it, yep. <laughs> didn't feel bad about it. But then the next couple prints that came out of it have been awesome. Yeah, and because that first test, instead of costing you a dollar, two dollars for one test that you messed up, cost pennies. Yeah. And so with that, that type of stuff there. I'm also looking I, at our paper shelf over there. We've got like <laughs> wallpaper samples. I mean, you can find sample booklets for upholstery fabric, wallpaper um, papers, those can also, even if they're small, can also be used for all kinds of projects. We used, I used some of the wallpaper, sample paper to make a mat for one of our um, photo prints. That we, yeah. Yeah. And it made and a really unique, cool looking patterned, you know, mat in a frame. Yeah. And for you guys uh, who are doing shows and have art prints, I know we hit this up on one of our last episodes. Um, framed art is very, very like... It, it makes your piece look that much better at an art show. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And most of the frames we have on our walls here and at shows are thrifted. Yep. Brand new, found in wrappers, found mm-hmm. plastic wrapped or, or still with the tags from big box stores on it for a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. Yep. I think the most I paid for like one of our larger frames is maybe five bucks. Um, but that stuff, you put your print in it, take it to an art show. You're selling it for $40, $50 in some cases for your original art in a fancy, or I wouldn't say fancy, but in a nice framed piece. Yeah. um, People eat it up. And so we buy frames like crazy, not just for our house from the thrift store, but also to sell our pieces in. And sometimes what's really cool is it changes the way a piece will look by putting it in a frame. Totally. And sometimes like a frame could make or break a piece in some cases like the right frame really does matter when it comes to to it and sometimes you find these vintage frames or these unique frames that you don't really see everywhere and it really just sets the piece off i I had um we've had some really good pairings yeah i had a squid one that was really cool because the squid was thin the frame was and it looked like long tall yeah too too lawyery i think is the way you put it it seemed very office like the way it originally mm-hmm. was. Mm-hmm. But then I took a torch to it, a sandy and a buffer pad, and really made the frame my, my own in that sense. And it really added to the final piece. I think our film uh, background came into play in that yeah. one. Where we are kind of like, <laughs> we got to beat this How up and give it, <laughs> give it a yeah. little bit more of a movie <laughs> feel look. Um, but that's one thing. Another thing we found. I'm, I yeah, get, so as frames. I'm looking across <laughs> the, the uh, off camera here, um, there's presses that we've gotten from the do- uh, not dollar store from the uh, thrift store there's specialty cutters uh there's uh binder staplers <laughs> that we found mm-hmm. and honestly most of the stuff has cost us less than five dollars in some cases yeah. about a dollar if not cheaper um and again this is not something that's happened overnight we have been doing this for years yeah of absolutely finding things and if you guys are in a tight space uh, of like time thrift stores aren't always going to have exactly what you're looking for you have to but be it ad- is worth a look it is yeah. you have to be adaptable in some cases sometimes it might not be exactly the right thing but like it will work if you kind of just think outside the box for that um i do have one of the cameras i found at the thrift store here cameras there's tons of them at thrift stores sometimes you can find some really good deals 
But if you're not comfortable with like cameras, I'd say stay away from them because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew when I bought this one, there was going to be potential problems with it, which hundred percent there was tore it apart myself, redid some resistors in it. It's a great functioning camera service from a camera shop for something like that. The one place I took it to said they wouldn't do it. Another place wanted $300 for it. I'm like, it's a early nineties, uh, late eighties camera. I'm not going to spend $300 yeah. on it. I literally bought the camera for $10 and then I bought the resistors for, I want to say I spent $4 on them off of eBay, did some research, found them. And I spent a night, um, I don't know, a few mm -hmm. hours, um, tore it apart. It's very daunting when I opened it up, but there's a lot more <laughs> wires than I thought. Watched a couple of YouTube videos, but I put, put it together, soldered some things up. Again, having a, a skill set that allowed me to do it. And I knew if I broke it, it makes a cool wall piece anyway. So I wasn't too like worried about it. But now it's one of my favorite cameras. Um, and it really didn't cost me much. But cameras can be a little bit uh daunting if you're not comfortable with them but um there's a lot of different cameras out there on the market if mm -hmm. you're getting into photography and want to learn there's some great ones i have found some really really nice cameras for really really cheap that i've utilized and gave them to people sold them different things like that but um the you just never know what you come across and but that's a good thing to keep uh an idea out there we have um books yes yeah. yeah, so and say the last thing we have to talk yeah. about i think on the table is books i have pattern books i have craft books we have books there for inspiration to get ideas we have some up actually behind us with um actually like there's two sets of books instructional there's, textbooks from design and art classrooms there's some of our nature books out there mm -hmm. uh for when we're out in the wild and want to identify stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we bought some fossil books yeah. and uh some seed and tree books um but those are also inspiration books like you said mm -hmm. um having different pieces I, I don't know how many different books i've bought for a dollar two dollars that just they might not always come in handy but then i go and pull them out and man they are a resource that you just can't find online yeah. sometimes yeah um especially the vintage ones when you're stuck and you're looking for an idea sometimes it helps to just flip through a book and let your mind wander and yeah. then you never know what you're gonna come up with well it's crazy because like i will go through my college books I still have some of them. I don't have all of them, but some of the ones that like actually like had good information in them, I kept. Um, but I would say the crazy part is I had to spend like ninety to a hundred dollars on some of the books I was buying uh, for college right. textbooks, <laughs> and I find them now at thrift stores for two dollars, yep. three dollars. Yep. Sometimes it's, I mean books have gotten a little pricier at thrift stores in some cases, but. Um, you just find some really good gems. Like this is a, a t-shirt book I have here and then a mm -hmm. kaleidoscope book. Um, and they're just, I, I, I will flip through them sometimes for a couple minutes while I'm like working on a design and it just gives me an idea to kind of like spin and go with. And that's yeah. a really helpful tool. Um, like I said, I've found pattern books for quilting patterns. Um, you can even find sewing books, all kinds. Yeah. All kinds. I, I love social media in the sense of how it can be inspiring with the different people out there. But I also find myself caught f swiping <laughs> more um through Scrolling. that inspiration <laughs> um then actually utilizing it for inspiration where the books i, I don't know there's a different feel to them it's there's tangible a it's something yeah. that you're holding in your hands and then and it gets to an end also go away yeah also. when you close the book it is <laughs> there there is no more to the book where social media you can just endlessly scroll and find yeah. things but um, like as you're flipping through those things i often forget like oh what was that thing i saw two minutes ago when I was scrolling that I now completely forgot about. Whereas the book, it's like, oh yeah, there was that thing in that book that I was looking at. Let me go back to it. And it's easy to find. And yeah, it's, it's tangible. It's there. You can reference it again. It's uh, so that's a, uh, another thing for, if you're looking for inspiration, check out one of the books. Also for materials. Oh, that's I wouldn't, true. Don't do this to like perfectly good books, but we will also find books at thrift stores or at like the Goodwill bins, for example, that are pretty trash. The cover is torn, you know, some pages have writing on them or whatever. Um, those are the types of books we like to use and 
um, used for buttons, used yeah. for different uh, projects. Um, there's a lot of people getting into collage art right mm-hmm. now, and that's where they're finding a lot of great pieces is old uh um, natural Ge- national geographic magazines mm-hmm. time magazines yeah. old books old uh ad space um different things it's things that are going to get thrown away because they're just not sought after or the information is kind of outdated mm-hmm. in some cases but they're still really good photography or there's really good art or there's mm-hmm. really good pieces inside of these that um if you want to create cool stuff, I mean, yeah. sometimes it's right there. and It's great for it, mixed media projects. Yeah, thinking and using the materials that you have available really can open a lot of doors to the creative world for you. Um, going to big box stores can be great, but it can be the same thing over and over and over. And it also can be the trendy thing as well. Yeah, um, it might just be the same thing that everyone else is doing. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that, no. getting yourself into the different art mediums and stuff like that. But where the creativity can really start to like find your voice is when you're not playing by those rules. You're not looking at the same button that everyone else is picking up. You're finding the vintage buttons. You're finding the unique bags of money (laughs) the scraps of leather that might not be the perfect piece or the perfect size but what i have been like loving what i've been seeing right now in the sewing world is people taking like old materials uh old sweatshirts and that might have a stain on one side but they're cutting it up and making Mm -hmm. quilted like sweatshirts or quilted pants or they're taking uh old childhood sleeping bags and turning them into puffer jackets Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah or adding their own like patches artwork design whatever onto these imperfect pieces like you know a sweater that has a hole in it or things like that and repairing it and giving it new life instead of seeing it go to a landfill yeah our tie-dye friend artist trash pile like Mm -hmm. she's talked about like finding material that has yeah yeah, finds has like a stain on it but when you tie dye it, that stain's no longer stain there. Goes away. It's a brand new <laughs> shirt in all sense. But yep. um, there's a lot of things that like we'll look at a material and go, oh man, I've got a bleach spot on that. Oh man, I, I like mm-hmm. okay, throw it away or donate it or something. But like, look at those materials. Like that's even the fun part. Sometimes you don't even have to go to the store to find materials. You can go into your closet, go into your bedroom yep. drawers or your kitchen and find things. Now. If you are living with your parents and they're not cool with you using the kitchen <laughs> or utensils. Or your siblings. Yeah. <laughs> don't steal oh, their clothes. Don't steal their clothes. I mean, make sure you have permission or to use <laughs> use the stuff or it's not being used in a way that's uh, damaging to it. But <laughs> that's always a fun thing is what do you have just right in front of you to start with? Because yeah. it, it doesn't require the latest, greatest, the newest, fanciest piece of tool or uh, equipment or material to get started in the maker world you just have to be resourceful and think outside of the box with that Mm -hmm. um one other thing it's i I don't know how easy it is to see on camera here but there is a cutting board oh yeah this is a nice big thick cutting board so um cutting materials on it um different like hammering into pieces and things like that that's again you find those at their stores i think we covered a lot of the stuff that's on the table and that's kind of what we wanted to do with this episode is dive into like some of the materials we have found some of the different pieces we have even not on camera we're going to get into some of how we use this stuff on some of the tutorial videos in the future um this year stay tuned with that stuff again subscribe so you guys know exactly (laughs) when those videos come out um but hopefully this uh, episode was a little inspirational inspired you to get out there and spend just a couple dollars at the thrift store to try something new yeah and uh guys let us know if you guys have been thrifting and there's something you guys have found out in the mm-hmm. thrift store that yeah you what's your use. greatest thrift thrift score yeah who the thrift score yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um but again guys we appreciate you tuning in to always making we love what we do here with all the different materials all the different stuff we get to create uh, and share with you guys so um again like subscribe comment down below Join us uh, on the next one, and we'll see you guys um, next time. Thanks for listening and watching. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye.